Gazer Chat A Parting Note to a Dead Lover So I finally managed to catch my breath and write something to commemorate our farewell. A brief reflection on my diseased logic, a cry over the cruelty of nature, a tribute to the symbiosis of misery, an ambivalent love letter to my inanimate wife, whom I killed ten days ago. It all feels quite surreal, Olga. Let me begin this requiem by declaring that I have revisited the night of your death numerous amounts of times, partially because it was an aesthetically exceptional experience, but also because I found the genealogy of my desire to kill you psychologically intriguing. I struggle to remember by which line of thought association I formed the idea to execute you, but I vividly recall that once it came into existence, it became a largely non-negotiable matter, and I think you realized fairly quickly that resistance would be futile. Well, still you tried. You tried so hard. Well, you cried and pleaded and magnified your existential significance and attempted to make bargains and endeavored to invoke pity and showered me with insults and ceaselessly begged for your life. It looked so distasteful. Your behavior was nothing less than mortifying, and the echoes of your screams were to keep me awake several nights after. I noted to myself that the unique grotesqueness of the situation was becoming increasingly difficult to tolerate. I guess what offended me the most was the fact that there was no sense of irony in your pathos. I was beginning to feel repulsed. Prior to this episode, I found you to be the most peculiar and rather remarkable lady. But witnessing you clinging onto your life so blindly, so firmly, so desperately, I could sense my fondness for you rapidly evaporating until I was left solely with feelings of contempt and piercing sadness. This is not to say that I planned to kill you. Keeping true to my reputation as a prince of impulsivity, I acted purely on the spur of the moment. In all likelihood, you registered that things were beginning to feel somewhat transactional between us, so I gathered some light escalation of events would be delightful, hence the homicide-suicide idea. It felt like the right thing to do. Not just any right thing to do. The only right thing to do. It fitted the situation, Olga. It corresponded with our lives. It suited our temperaments. It was a perfect combination of our tumultuous love story that was slowly losing its momentum. I still struggle to understand how you failed to see that, given your intellectual capabilities, detached demeanor, and inner emotional circus, you must have noticed that this world was beneath you. Your unquestioned attachment to it was indeed quite bewildering. You were a perceptive woman, and I'm sure you had a certain level of awareness of the fact that entering a liaison with me carried significant parallels with signing a suicide pact. You used to laugh whenever I embarked on one of my self-destructive journeys. What an invigorating experience, being married to a man with an overactive death drive. In hindsight, I must say that I seriously doubt the authenticity of your surprise when I pulled the trigger. Now, through the years we spent together, you were given countless opportunities to get acquainted with my urges, pathologies, transgressions and depraved fantasies. I am somewhat perplexed as to how you did not foresee that the usurous toll for our bond would eventually be collected. I always knew that I had an aura of gloominess stemming from my soul, and from a relatively young age 
I had a vague understanding of the fact that my life would end badly. But you know, only as I began to write, I came to realize the magnitude of darkness I carry inside me. I suspect those stories that ended unhappily must have been incubated in my heart for a very long time. Under a veneer of gentleness, we are all slightly murderous. But I must say that I felt somewhat uniquely at ease writing about violence, insanity, torture, incest, and death. Even as I was a young and innocent boy, I can remember their wickedness feeling so intensely and strangely familiar. And as the years went by, I evolved, gradually transforming into a still somewhat insecure, yet simultaneously cheerful and determined rapist. A delicate and violent man with a soft spot for non-consensual asphyxiation. And now this. Just before the grand finale, a brand new identity shift. Your multi-dimensional lover unveiled yet again a new layer of his essence. Gaze a chat. A master of introspection and self-delusion. Now also a spouse killer and failed suicider. It appears that my penetrative self-analysis did not get me very far in life, Olga. And in the end, my ceaseless worry that I shall never be happy turned out to be justified. I must clarify that I do not regret killing you that night. I regret failing at killing myself. But luckily this is a rectifiable matter. Because you see, Olga, I have a plan. My lonely cell is beginning to feel increasingly suffocating. And last night, I made a solid decision to flee this overly restrictive venue and head towards the sea. The security in this place leaves a lot to be desired, and having meticulously assessed the situation, I predict it will not be overly challenging to escape when the lights go out. Once I get out of here, I will slowly progress over the Balkans and attempt to keep a low profile until I reach the Adriatic waters. I cannot recall if I ever mentioned it to you, but I always dreamt of dying by the sea. Ideally by a self-inflicted wound. It is such a romantic way to go. I find it rather unfortunate that you will not be there to witness it. Everything ends, Olga. It doesn't matter how hard you hold on.